Let's make God, the Word who incarnated and dwelt among us. We come to your presence. As we are going to meditate your word, help us to incarnate. Help us to be enfleshed with your word and be with us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Malayalam, there is a saying, Ulsava Pitena. Puram Urinya Pura Parambonoka Prayaran in Malayalam. That means a day after the festival. Always the days after the festival will be the days of silence. So here also. Let us meditate the mystery of incarnation. Today, the church set apart to meditate upon the theme, Messiah, the fulfillment of the promise. Messiah, the fulfillment of the promise. Let us look into the gospel portion that we have already read. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. A very beautiful passage, but at the same time, very, very difficult passage to understand. And we know John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, is known as the prologue or the introduction to the entire um, gospel of John. So, verse 4 and 5, let me read. Verse 4 and 5, in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it or overcome it. 14, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son. Full of grace and truth. Vajanam Jaram Dariche Namadeel Parthu. Every gospel writer is trying to interpret the birth story or the Christmas story in a different vantage point or different understanding that we know. As we discussed in the last Sunday, the gospel according to Saint Matthew trying to or tries to interpret the birth in the in the in, in the perspective of Matthew. Sorry, in the perspective of Joseph. If you read the book of or the gospel according to St. Mark, that we can read a, a, a perspective or in the vantage point through the vantage point of Mary. But here, John gives a very different perspective of the birth story. He was using the existing philosophical categories to interpret the birth of Christ. So if you want to understand, really understand the, 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 this passage, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, we have to look back into the philosophy of that time. There was a dominant philosophy of John's time known as Gnosticism. Some of you might have heard about that term, Gnostic or Gnosticism. So according to Gnostic philosophy, world, the matter is evil. World is evil. Flesh is evil because it is matter. God cannot touch the evil matter. Uh, God is not evil. God is away from the, the matter. So there was to understand dualism was there, matter and uh, spirit. God has a, in, the, in the level of spirit and the matter, we are all in the level of matter. So uh, under, according to the Gnostic understanding, so the matter is evil. The ever powerful, the holy God, the spirit God, cannot touch or enter into the matter, the world. That was the understanding of Gnosticism. So that was a very prominent, a dominant philosophy of the first century. So here, the gospel writer was in a way giving answer to or countering that philosophy. And the gospel writer is saying, the word, that was the eternal word, God, 
came to the world and touched the matter, the ones it was considered as evil. And God enflushed the evil Jadam Dharichu. Jadam Baba Manam the Jindhi Chadatha, Jadam Devam Jadam Dharichu in Nuladana, isn't it too And we know in, even in Malayalam songs, we have such similar understanding. Logam Babam Bishaj and Nethodaga Ilana Kalapata. World is evil. So we are not upon to this world. That was the understanding of most of the Christians. But Bible says, or the, the gospel according to St. John clearly affirms that the world is not evil. God, because if you say that world is evil, then you have to say that God created this evil world. No, God created a noble world, not an evil world, a very holy world. And God sent us to this holy world to live here. So the world is not evil. World is holy because it is created by God. So God sent us to this holy world to make to keep that holiness of this world. So when the humans are the failed, God sent his own son to, to this holy world to keep this holiness of this world. So that is why John said the eternal God <clears throat> come to the world as a real real human. Again, th that redefines God himself and that redefines man, human, humanity. That redefines divinity, God, and that redefines humanity. In a way, why? Because oh, before that, we know even in the Old Testament, if you read the Old Testament, only the people, very few people, only a very few people who have uh, the extreme holiness, they can only see God. So that is why we know Moses went up to the hill, to the mountain, the mountain of holiness. Elijah went up to the mountain. So that was symbolic, the mountain of Only people who went up to the mountain of holiness can see the God. But here we, see, we, we read, it's different. God come to the world. God come to the world, dealt among us as one of us. It is very interesting and very drastic and very revolutionary. God, the God, and um, it is, God is not an abstract, real, abstract principle, but God is a concrete reality. Concrete reality who dwelt among us as a human being. So then we are praying and we are worshipping not an abstract principle, but a concrete reality. So here we know Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew that talks about Emmanuel. Luke talks about Messiah. Here John the Baptist, John, the, the gospel writer, speak about the power to become children of God. Human power, capacity to become children of God. And that is the real thrust of this, the whole passage. God came to the world for what? To make us, what? Children of God. So again, I said, define, redefined God. That means God became human and redefined humanity. Human humans became children of God. So God has the capacity to be human, and humans has the capacity to be the children of God. And that is the real thrust of this the entire passage. God come to the world as a as a mere human. As I yesterday, as I mentioned, God accepted the weaknesses of humanity for what? To make us the children of God. Redefines God and redefines humanity. But I'm not going to uh, detail of the, the theological understanding of this, this, this passage. But let me share with you three words from this passage. Firstly, light. Three words are very important in this passage. Light and then witness, word. These are the three words that we can read from this passage. Be a light. Light. I read about a story uh, recently in a book of a, of a couple who took their son and daughter to... Kalsbad Caverns, that is in New Mexico, in the U.S. itself. The tour of this wonderful national park includes a dramatic moment at, the, at its deepest point, the underground. Upon reaching the lowest point, the guide turns off the light. He turns off the light for what? To, to show the, the real darkness of the darkness. He turns off the light. Just to how dark the darkness can be. So enveloped in the, in the darkness, the little boy began to cry. Immediately, he heard a very sweet song of his little sister. 
uh, elder sister, don't cry. Someone here knows how to turn on the lights. Don't cry. Someone here knows how to turn on the lights. So the text, today's text, it affirms that truly someone is there who knows how to turn the light. Truly someone is there who knows how to turn the light. Maybe we may think that we are living in darkness. Our situations, our surroundings, so many crises are there. War is there in, uh, in the world. And for our, uh, uh, our, our personal life, so many crises might be there. We may think that we are living in the darkness. Why all these things happen to us? Complete darkness, thick darkness. But remember, this text affirms that someone is there who knows when the light should be lit. And that is the real affirmation of this text. And that is the affirmation of Christmas. God is with us. Who knows? He knows when you need the real light. And he will surely turn on the light for us. Again, this is a challenge too. God said, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the same Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Same thing. I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And that is the real mission to the church. Lighter to lighter. Receive the light from, the, from Christ and emanate that light to the world. So be a light. Of course, it is very interesting, very, very, very pacifying note is that God is there or someone is there who knows to turn on the light. But at the same time, it's a challenge too. Can you lit light? Can you be a light in the world? Christmas is a call to be a light. Can you oh, give light to someone else? We know darkness has a speciality or particular, a, a special uh, a na nature is there in darkness. Darkness will conceal us and darkness will make hide others. We are living in many camouflage. We are, we are, are, are living in, in, in many concealed identities. It may camouflage us. Sometimes we are living in darkness. We are not ready to come out of our own darkness. Of course, Christ is there or God is there. He's inviting us to come out of the darkness. So it is a challenge. Come out of the, the camouflaged identities of our life, me and to you. So Christmas is a challenge to come out from the darkness. And again, Christmas is a challenge or a call to to, to give light to somebody else. Matulavare Ulipichin Rutunavaram. Well, Velichatlik Varan Tarasapurna Nevaram. Velichatlik, Matulavare Kunduvan, Namaka Velichatlik Pogan, Namukasatikam. It's a challenge. Secondly, be a witness. The second word in this, this text is very important be a witness. It talks about, so we know this text is not only talking about Jesus, the word, but also talks about the witness, the real witness. John, who came to witness. Recently, again, I read a, a small poem. A very two, three lines is there. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Pay attention. Be astonished and tell about it. These words come from a poet, Mary Oliver. She, she uh, in, in, her, in her poem, instructions for living a life. Instructions for living a life. It's very interesting that, that title itself. Instructions for living a life. Are we really living our life? It's a question. So instructions for living a life. Pay attention. Be astonished and tell about it. So every moment, pay attention. And every moment, be astonished. And every moment, tell about every moment. Because every moment is a wonder for us. The next moment is a wonder for us. If we give attention to every moment, there are so many things are there that we are we can, we can be astonished and we have to tell. Am I right? So many uh, experiences are there in our moment, in our life. Each and every moment is a wonder for us. John 1 is not talking about the incarnation of Christ, but talking about a witness. Be a witness. So our entire life, if you look into our life, the, la the, 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 the last moment, Advanir wonder the problem of our time is that it became, uh, uh, we are in a way not ready to understand the wonder of life, the wonder of moment. 
മീഡിയോക്കെ ലൈഫ് നമ്മളിങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ മുന്നോട്ട് പോവുകയാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു ജീവിതത്തിന്റെ ഒരു നിമിഷവും നമ്മളെ സംബന്ധിച്ച് അത്ഭുതം നമുക്ക് തരുന്നില്ല എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ബട്ട് തിങ്ക് അബൌട്ട് എവറി മൊമെന്റ് എവറി ബ്രത്ത് ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ ടേക്കിംഗ് എവറി മൊമെന്റ് ഓഫ് അ ലൈഫ് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് എ വണ്ടർ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വണ്ടർ സോ പേ അറ്റൻഷൻ ബി അസ്റ്റോണിഷ് ഇൻ യുവർ ലൈഫ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വണ്ടർ your life your your moment and your your family and your children uh, several uh, such kind of wonder is uh, is there in our life so many wonders are there in our life and be attention pay attention be astonished and tell about it tell about the wonders of your life parayan anengil etra mathram wonders aanu namakku ullad le how many wonders namakku nammude jeevithathil logathil eight albhudangal okkeyan so many seven wonders are there in the world but our life is more than that more than that wonder thirdly the word this is the power of the word the word became flesh and dwelt among us so the entire passage is talking about the word in the beginning there was word and the word created the world then the same word that created the world come to the world and flushed and dwelt among us so this is a challenging verse the incarnation of god the embodiment of god in human life the word become flesh it is not limited to jesus of course jesus is the archetype the picture the word can become flesh it's a challenge to us can you enflesh the world we are reading the world always we are meditating the world you are in the prasangikunnundu but it's a challenge to me and to you can you enflesh this world we know there are four gospels in the bible of course there are so many other gospels that is not included in the bible but there is a saying that fifth gospel is there what is the fifth gospel the one who read the one who reads the gospel the four gospels is the fifth gospel that means me and you we are the fifth gospels what is the role of gospel gospel is picturizing the life of christ the ministry of christ the wonders of christ so what is our our our, our mission nothing but be a gospel talking gospel walking gospel coralling gospels smiling gospels le sanjarikunna nadakkunna valakondaakunna chirikunna suvisheshangalana nammal ellavar we are the fifth gospel can you enflesh the word the word has the power again the word has the power to create it's a challenge to us even our any simple words no even our simple justice has the power to create le vaakkine shakti unde enna padipikkunna oru vaak oru bhagam kodiyana idu ഓരോ വാക്കിനും ശക്തിയുണ്ട് ഈച്ച് ആൻഡ് എവറി വേർഡ് ഹാസ് പാൾ നമ്മുടെ ചില നോട്ടങ്ങൾക്ക് പോലും ശക്തിയില്ലേ സം ഓഫ് അവർ ജസ്റ്റിസ് ഹാസ് പാൾ ടു ക്രിയേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ടു ഡിസ്ട്രോയ് സോ വേൾഡ് ഹാസ് പാൾ ബിക്കോസ് ദ വേൾഡ് കെയിം ടു ദ വേൾഡ് ഹാസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് സോ ദ സെയിം വേർഡ് ഹാസ് പാൾ ഈവൻ ആർ അവർ സിമ്പിൾ വേർഡ് ഹാസ് പാവർ ഈച്ച് ആൻഡ് എവറി വേർഡ് ഹാസ് പാവർ ടു ക്രിയേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ടു ഡിസ്ട്രോയ് തിങ്ക് അബൌട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഹൗ വി യൂസ് അവർ വേർഡ് ടു ക്രിയേറ്റ് or to destroy devam vajanam jadam darichu logathilekku vannathu jeevane samrakshikkunnathu jeevane venu to enhance the life to enliven's the life to enrich the life but how we use our word to enhance or to destroy to create or to destroy our word also has power enflesh the divine word to give life to others not to destroy may god bless us be a light be a witness be a word may god bless us one of you can lead us in prayer